Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Zoom worship service. A special welcome to our speaker, Dr. Lim Kai Yong. We will begin worship with the prelude. to read a few verses from Revelations. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we come to worship such an awesome God, holy, pure, mighty, the creator of the world, do we wonder what kind of worship is acceptable to such a one as he? We hear that he accepts a sacrifice of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He will accept lowliness, obedience, our spirit, and truth. Let us sing the opening hymn. Worship the Lord in the beauty of the Lord. Thank you. 
indeed, Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, we come before you only because you enable us through the blood of Christ. We dare not come by any other means except by your grace. And so, Lord, we come with a broken spirit and a contrite heart for all that we have done wrong against you and against our fellow men. Accept, Lord, our confession. Accept us because you love us, because you are merciful to us. So, Lord, we pray that whatever we offer in service today, you will be pleased to accept. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit within us that enables us to worship. In Jesus' precious name, amen. believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now join our hearts in worshipping in songs. Psalms 145 verse 7 says, They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing for your righteous, of your righteousness. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music.
Good evening, brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles. And today the scripture reading is taken from Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to verses 22. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Thank you, Dimi, for the reading. This evening, we are most privileged to have Reverend Dr. Lim Ka Yong, who out of his busy schedule has slotted us into the schedule. Dr. Lim teaches New Testament uh, studies at Seminary Theology Malaysia. He's also an Anglican priest and serves at St. Paul's Church in Pataling Jaya. He did his theological studies at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, as well as the University of Wales. Today, he's going to speak, uh, he's going to continue his uh, uh, teaching on revelations, which he started last night. And the topic he's going to speak on is very interesting. I am doing very well. Dr. Lim. Uh, greetings to all of you. A uh, very good evening and thank you for the invitation and for having me uh, to worship the Lord and to reflect. Yes, we took a look at the letters uh, to the seven churches. We have covered the first six churches and today this evening I'll wrap up by reflecting on the last letter written to the seventh church, that is uh, the church in Laodicea. Uh, recently, a movement called the Bandera Pute uh, was launched in the social media and it has gained quite a fair bit of traction. And this movement was meant to encourage those who suffered under the present pandemic to raise a white flag uh, in front of their their houses or flats or whatever they are staying to signal to the community and to the neighborhood that they need help. Many have lost jobs. Mental cases are on the rise. Suicide rate have also gone up. Many, especially the B40 community, have been particularly badly hit, be it financially or mentally. And so to raise the white flag it's not to say, I surrender, but it is to say, I need help. Please help me. It is to say, things are not well with me and my family. Please help me. And to some, it may be a plea, it may be a cry for help. I have no more food to eat. I have no money to buy any food. Please help me. And to raise this white flag, is to acknowledge our vulnerability and is to signal to the community that I can't make it on my own. 
I'm not doing well. Please help me. And this campaign has attracted fairly good response. In my neighborhood, uh, there'll be groups of people looking out for those who raise white flag. There's even an app that's been created that you can look at it and you know exactly where, which house uh, someone has raised a white flag so that those of us who are able to assist, we could do what we could, what we could to help them. Now, interestingly, not everyone agrees uh, with this uh, movement. Some say that this is not the right thing to do. Uh, some argue that we shouldn't raise the right flag as if to say that we're going to give up on our life. And to this group of people, they say that you should just pray to God and seek help from God and not to raise a white flag. To those who question this movement to help others, they are basically saying, hey, I'm okay. Everything is fine. No worries. Perhaps they are blinded to the plight and to the cries of the people on the streets, and perhaps they are detached from the reality of life. Perhaps they think that since they are okay, everyone should be okay as well. This sort of attitude could have been the same attitude that we see in the church in Laodicea towards the end of the first century. They probably think that they are doing so well that they do not even notice that they are in a very spiritually deplorable situation. They have, should be raising their spiritual white flag, asking God for help and mercy. Instead, they responded by saying, we are doing very well. And perhaps this is the very reason why this letter was written to the church in Laodicea. And this is a letter, as I mentioned yesterday, that contains no commendation, no words of praise at all. There's only rebuked for this church. Let us go back in time to the first century and visit this church and reflect on Christ's message for this church. I will take you to Turkey to visit the site of Laodicea and to reflect on the message of Christ to this church. If you can recall what I said yesterday for those of you who were with us, if you took a look at the map of Turkey, you will see that as John was exiled in Patmos as he wrote Revelation, this book of Revelation would have been sent to the seven churches and this would be according to the sequence that a courier uh, would travel in order to pass on the message to the individual churches. And Laodicea was inland and it would be the final destination uh, uh, to Laodicea. Laodicea being inland is also a city that is located in a rather fertile region. And the region that is located is known as the Lycus River Valley. If you look closely at uh, this map, Laodicea, together with two other cities, Herapolis and Colossae, forms a triangle. And this is a very fertile uh, region and they form a very important trade centers collectively for this particular uh, region. We do not know much about the church in Laodicea. Apart from Revelation chapter 3, the only incidents that we have that it was mentioned in the Bible was from Paul's letters to the Colossians. When Paul wrote to the Colossians, he mentioned the church in Laodicea. I'm going to read to you from Colossians chapter 4, verses 12 to 16, then we get a glimpse of this church. Paul says this, Epaphrates, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He's always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he's working hard for you, and for those at Laodicea and Herapolis. So in this letter to the Colossian, Paul mentioned Laodicea and Herapolis. So these are the three cities that form a triangle. And in verse 14, Paul mentions here, Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas sends greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, See that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. 
And from this passage, we know that the church in Laodicea was founded during Paul's extended stay in the city of Ephesus during his third missionary journey. And this church is most likely founded by his assistant, his trusted assistant, Epaphrates. The group that Laodicea included some that met in the house of the woman named Nympha. There was a church that meets in the house. She, she would have been someone that uh, was rather wealthy as she has a villa, a Roman villa or a house that the church met in. Although Paul mentioned the brothers and sisters in verse 16 uh, in his letter to the Colossians, most likely Paul has never visited them. But we do know that Paul also wrote a letter to the church at Laodicea and he asked that the churches in Colossae and Laodicea to exchange these two letters. However, we don't know what Paul wrote uh, to the church in Laodicea. The letter has been lost. It was not survived. So that's little that we know about the church in Laodicea. And so if we read the letters, seven letters of Revelation together, as we have covered uh, yesterday evening, Laodicea has the unenviable distinction of being the church that has nothing, Christ has nothing good to say. Of all letters, this particular letter to the church in Laodicea is the one that is strongly worded and full of sarcasm. It's full of rebuke. It is full of warning. And it's not a letter that I wish the church today would receive from God if God were to write to us at all. So let's take a closer look at this letter. At the same time, examine the background of the city of Laodicea that will help us understand uh, this letter that's being written to them. Immediately when the recipients of the church in Laodicea was mentioned, the first thing that we see is the rebuke that Jesus speaks against this church in verse 15 and verse 16. I know your deeds, that you're neither hot, cold, nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And this is indeed a very serious charge to tell someone that his or her deeds are so worthless and likened to something that you want to spit it out is not very flattering. But to those in Laodicea, when they hear this word, they, they are neither cold nor hot, that Christ is going to speak out from his mouth. They immediately knew the seriousness of the message that is given to them. One of the major drawbacks of the city of Laodicea is its location, being inland, and there's no local water supply. It has water problems. It has no cold water. It has no hot water. If it, Laodicea would like to draw cold water, it would draw from the nearby city, Colossae. And if it wants hot water, it will draw from the hot springs of Herapolis, the other city. And you can see this, I, I was in Herapolis, I was taking a balloon ride, you can see this is the city of Herapolis and you can see all the minerals, uh, this white, it looks like white cotton, these are all the minerals that the hot water overflows into a pond that is below here. So Laodicea is famous for its hot springs. And today, if you were to go to Laodicea, can spend time dipping, uh, dipping your feet into the warm water that flows out from this city. And this is the hot water from Heropolis. By the time if you were to draw water from Colossae, the cold water from Colossae, and by the time it arrived in Laodicea, it is lukewarm. It is not cold anymore. Similarly, if you were to draw water from Heropolis, the hot water, by the time it travels all the way through the aqueduct and it arrives at the city in Laodicea, it is no longer hot. It became lukewarm. And worse still, because this hot water coming from uh, Heropolis are full of minerals, by the time it arrived in Laodicea, it is lukewarm, it's of no use, and it's full of mineral. And if you take this as drinking water, you wouldn't, your body would not be able to process the, uh, all this 
uh, uh, mineral that's found in, in, in the water. So what this heavy presence of mineral will not be suitable for your body. And what, you, what will happen to you is you'll be spitting the water out. So the water is only used as a means of inducing vomit. So this metaphor of comparing the church to the city's lukewarm water would have been understood by the believers. For the Laodiceans, they know immediately that what Jesus meant when he tells them that because they are lukewarm, like this water, this useless water now, is going to spit them out of their mouth. You can't drink this. You drink it, you will induce vomit. So this is exactly the same situation of the water supply there. Because it was lukewarm, because it was full of minerals, it is of no use. Whoever drinks it will naturally spill it out. And this is the same metaphor that is being used here. So the deeds of the church in Laodicea are, are compared with this water. They are useless, which means their deeds that they do, whatever that they do, will probably not be something that is worthwhile, even though it's not mentioned very much in this uh, letter, what deeds uh, they were doing. But let's continue and see what the rest of the letters say. What are possibly could be their deeds? Why is it that their deeds are so useless and worthless in the eyes of Christ? In verse 17, right up to verse 18, we probably get a glimpse of their deeds. Verse 17, you say, I am rich, I've acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. And I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich, and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes so that no one can see. So how could this stern rebuke hit home to the people in Laodicea. Laodicea is a rather pleasure-conscious city. It has two large theatres, and what you see on the screen right now is one of the huge theatres that they have. The city is noted throughout the Roman Empire as a city that is very, very rich and wealthy. Today, if you're going to visit the ruins, of the city of Laodicea, we can immediately notice that there is large agora, market square there. And this suggests that this city has a vibrant commercial center. In fact, in the first century, Laodicea was well known as a banking center, a financial center for the province. It was the most prosperous of the seven cities of Revelation. Their wealth is well known. When the city was destroyed by the earthquake in the year 60, that's probably about 30 years before this revelation was written to them, the citizens of Laodicea refused to receive any financial aid offered by the Roman Empire. They told the Roman Empire that they did not need any help at all. If the Roman Empire offered them brim, now nah, we don't need it. If the Roman Empire offered them prihatin, no, we don't need it. If the Roman Empire offered them permule, no, we don't need it. We don't need any financial packages that the government of the day offered them. Instead, they rebuilt their entire city at their own expense. So this goes to show the tremendous amount of wealth they have. They were self-sufficient and that makes the city famous. Because of their wealth, they were arrogant. They could say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and don't need a thing. So you can see, perhaps this is the very reason why their deeds are worthless, because the deeds are all self-made. It is as if God is no longer needed in their life, and they can do it by their own strength. See, I can build the entire city by my wealth. We don't need any handout from the government. We don't need any donation. We don't need financial aid. What white flag? What white flag are you talking about? That would be their attitude. I am doing very well. No, I don't need help. But in this particular letter written by Christ to them, the Laodiceans are told that they are wretched, they are pitiful, and they are poor. How ironic it is. 
apart from the banking center, Laodicea also derives its wealth from the fertility of the surrounding countryside and its textile industry. It is famous for its black cloth uh, uh, textile industry. Here, a black, glassy black wool was produced in the Lycus Valley. This sort of textile is known to be very soft, something like a silk. And the locations wear black garments with pride. It is this black garment that makes the city famous as a textile center. But in this letter written by Christ to the Laodiceans, they are told that they are naked, even though they can be very proud and arrogant of their famous black garment. How ironic. We have seen that the Laodicea is famous for its banking center, is famous for its textile industry. There's one more thing they were well known for. They are also well known for a medical school that is located in the region. And this well-known medical school produced an eye salve or eye ointment uh, ointment that's able to help people with their eyesight. And this ointment is this med medicine is linked to the Phrygian god. And this Phrygian powder that was made uh, uh, in this temple of the Phrygian uh, god is said to cure weak eyes and for those who have eyesight problem. There's also a medical school in the city where a famous ophthalmologist is known to practice in Laodicea. So as such, the Laodiceans take great pride in their medical skill, particularly in curing eye diseases that the ancient world knew. But then in this letter to the Laodiceans, they are unaware of their spiritual blindness. In fact, Christ told them that you are blind. So what we see here is that the city of Laodicea is famous for its wealth and banking industry, its clothing industry, its medical school, especially the eye ointment or the eye salve that they produce. It is probably against this background that verse 17 in chapter 3 says that you say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and I do not need anything. But you do not realize that you are wretched, you are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. If I were a citizen of this city, this letter of rebuke would have been very, very strong words for me. It would have hit me really hard. The force of the rebuke would have hit home. It hit the pride. It hit the arrogance. It hit the self-sufficiency of the people in this city. The location became so affluent that they have forgotten how much they need Jesus. They think, they think that they could rely on their strength and their ability to accomplish everything. And they've forgotten that all their deeds are like that mineral-laden water, lukewarm water that is no use, only to be spit out by those who drink it. They have pushed God out of their life. I am doing very well. I don't need to raise a white flag. I don't even need God in my life. Therefore, Jesus told the Laodiceans, you are not doing well. You need to raise your bandera pute. You need help. And you need to admit it. That is why in verse 18 onwards, Jesus said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire so that you can become rich. And white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see to those whom I love and discipline. So be earnest and repent. This was a call to the people in the church in Laodicea to repent of their self-sufficiency and to find their sufficiency in Christ. Instead of trusting in your own wealth, Buy gold refined in fire, gold that's been tested so you can find richness in Christ. Instead of being proud of the white black garment you have, buy white clothes from the Lord to wear the clothes of righteousness that will cover your shameful 
sinful nature. You think the sound they produce can make your eyes see? Let me tell you, you are blind. Buy stuff, receive this stuff from the Lord so that you put it on your eyes. Your eyes can be open and you can see your spiritual needs. This is a call to the laudations to take heed of their spiritual blindness so that they could turn from relying on themselves but to turn to God. And that is why Jesus recognized that they have pushed God out of their lives. That's why in the final part of the letter, it was an invitation to the laudations. Here I stand in chapter 3 verse 20. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. And Jesus is reminding the laudation. I know you can you you I know you are proud of your self-sufficiency. You think that by your strength you can do everything. In fact, you have pushed me out of your life. But now I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. Do you hear my voice or not? And if you hear my voice, would you not open the door so that I can come in and eat with you and you with me? Christ wants to come back to the life of the laudations. They have pushed him out. But would the laudation listen? Would they raise their white flag to Jesus and tell the Lord, Lord, I need help. I can't make it on my own. I'm spiritually blind. I can't see. I'm spiritually poor. I have nothing in me and I'm spiritually naked. All that you see are my sinful nature. Lord, I'm raising this white flag to you. Please come and help me. Would the Laodicea do such thing? That's why this letter ends with these words. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Will the Laodicean Christians hear? And will we hear what God is saying to us as well. I also wonder whether we could have been like the Laudation Christians today. Do we hear what the Spirit is saying to us this evening? Have we been cold and apathetic in our love for God like the church in Laudation? Have we allowed our pride and our strength, our, our self-sufficiency to make us feel that we can do all things by our strengths without relying and looking to God. God. Jesus calls the church in Laodicea to repent. And I think the Lord is also asking us to repent if we have been like the church in Laodicea. Have the deeds that we are doing become like lukewarm water that only to be spilled out by those who drink it. But yet the Lord offers forgiveness, grace, and mercy. The Lord Jesus issues the same call to all of us as the same as the call that he issued to the Laodicean church. He says, I stand at the door and knock, reminding us of his faithfulness and he care, that, of his care for us. Will we raise also our white flag to God and tell him this evening, Lord, we need you. The present situation, the pe present pandemic is a very challenging season for us. God, we need you. We need you in our lives. We need you in our church. We need you in our nation. We need you to lead and guide us. May God continue to speak to us as he continues to walk among us, urging us to hold on what is true, urging us to have a closer walk with him, urging us to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us come to the Lord. And if any way that we feel that we need the Lord, let us raise our bandera pute to the Lord. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Do we hear God's knocking at our door? And if we do so, would we open the door of our hearts and invite him to come in, to lead us, to guide us, so that we may offer him a life that is worth living, a life that is pleasing to him, a life that is like a living sacrifice offered up to him, that is pleasing to him. Let us pray.
O oh Lord our God, we come to you. We know that we are in need of you. We raise our white flag to you, O oh Lord our God, knowing that we need help from you. We need you in our life. We need you in our church. We need you in our community. We need you in our nation. And we know, Lord, that you are always faithful, standing there, knocking at the door. And I pray for all of us here as we listen to you knocking on our door, that we will open our hearts to you and welcome you in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Lin, for that sobering sermon. And uh, wonder if a letter was written to Batu Pahat, would it meet with hearts that are like Batu? May the Spirit speak to all of us and cause us to move in response. I shall now bring you the announcements. A warm welcome to all who have come to worship with us. I see one or two names that I don't recognize, uh, so they must be new to us. Welcome to you. Please join us again next week. First announcement, we already know because of the MCO that our staff uh, cannot be working from the office. Um, however, we are all contactable on the office phone as well as on our personal handphones. All services will be conducted through Zoom throughout the MCO period until further notice. So please uh, try to help Steve take attendance by logging in with a name, uh, not a handphone and Huawei and all that, that he has to keep on asking who is Huawei, who is iPhone. Please help him by uh, renaming yourself. Thank you. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. We are very thankful that this uh, fundraising has been successful. The target of 300,000 has been met and uh, the ESP has thus far closed the fundraising. Our church has given 20,000 to the above fund and uh, we are thankful to God that some of you have already started giving. And please continue to give. You can still contribute to this fund. You may use our GGBP account, kindly specify for COVID-19 aid. Ties and offerings as well can be banked in if you do online banking. If not, you could get someone to bring the offering to the treasurer. You could uh, maybe enlist your, the help of your CG leader. As I know, one or two CG leaders are very helpful. They collect uh, the tithes and offerings from the members and give to the treasurer. Right, that's the end of the announcements. I will lead you in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, we are so thankful today that we have uh, this opportunity to hear again from your word and to come together as your body, brothers and sisters in Christ, to sing songs of worship to you and to raise our hearts praise to you for all that you have done and you are doing. Lord, we thank you for every member of GGBP, from the youngest to the oldest. And we want to commit everyone into your loving hands because we have need of you. We need you to protect us. We need you to keep us in good health, body, soul, and spirit. Lord, we pray that you will help us by your spirit, each one of us to look within our hearts. If we have wandered away from you, if we have lost our first love for you and for others, Forgive us, Lord. We pray you will come and renew and renovate our hearts. 
Lord, this moment I also want to pray for those who among us are weak, old, infirm. We pray, oh Lord, for your healing hand upon them. We pray for Mrs. Singham, for Miss Young, for Christine, for Mrs. Ng, as well as for Brother Vincent. Lord, we also want to pray for our brethren, uh, the Nepalese and the Vietnamese. Some of them, Lord, in dire straits because they have lost their jobs and need help. We thank you, Lord, that we can reach out to them. But we pray, O oh Lord, that you will draw near to them so that you will comfort them in their need. That they can look to you, the Lord that they have come to know in this country. They can look to you for help. We also want to commit to you, Lord, our country in uh, something of a mess, Lord. Because of the pandemic, because of the political uncertainty, Father, you, we need you to come and heal the country. We need you to come and help us. We need your help, Lord. Hear our prayers, Lord, because you love us, not because of anything that we have done, not because of how good we are, but because of your faithfulness and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our closing hymn says, I must have the Savior with me, which is exactly what should be the response of our hearts to the sermon today. Invite Reverend Benedict to pronounce the benediction. Let us all unite our hearts in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 
Hello earth be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you again. Okay, thank Dr. you Lee. very much. We we'll come back again Reverend. next week. Thank you, Dr. Kayong, for sharing you. with us the message. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.